Well, hello, I'm David Freeman Webb. Is that really in the Bible? I was looking on, reading an article, I forget exactly the uh, location of that article. Fascinating article that said that between 6,000 and 10,000 churches, between six to 10,000 churches in the U.S. are dying each year. Yes, dying each year. That means that over 100 churches will die this week. And of course, there are others who are on like life support. All over the country this weekend, small handful of people, a small handful of people will gather in a huge building which once boasted very large congregations. Today, less than 20% of Americans attend church on a regular basis. And as a result, churches are dying in very large numbers. And this trend appears to be accelerating. So when churches die, what happens to the buildings? Well, a large number of abandoned church buildings have become wineries or breweries or bars. Now that's a sad commentary right there, I'll tell you that. But it's, it's the truth. Others have been converted into hotels, bed and breakfast. A few have been transformed into entertainment venues such as uh, indoor play, uh, playground for children or laser tag arenas or a skate park. Why do you think churches are dying? Who do we blame for this? Who will step up to the plate and accept full responsibility for the fact that six to 10,000 churches are dying every year, which means 100 this week? Who can we blame? Who can we, who can we blame? Now, before we look at who we can blame, for the decline of the church, let's ask this question. Does God ever get sick of us going to church? Does God ever get sick of church? Let's just put it that way. Well, let's take a look at this verse in Isaiah 1 and verse 13. And I'm reading this from the Message Bible because I love the way this is put across. It says, quit your worship charades. Notice that, quit it. I can't stand your trivial religious games. Monthly conferences, weekly Sabbaths, special meetings, meetings, meetings. I can't stand one more. Meetings for this, meetings for that. I hate them. You've worn me out. I'm sick of your religion, religion, religion while you go right on sinning. And that little phrase, while you go right on sinning, sinning, sinning. You know, if you're going to keep on sinning, just quit. Church is what God seems to be saying. Just quit it. Why are you even bothering with it? You know, why are you going to church? And I really believe that the, the, the concept of confession, especially that is as it's presented from the Catholic Church, has done more to pervert our concept of what a true relationship with God is all about than probably any other church out there. Um, I remember watching a movie. It was a woman, she ran across the street, she got hit by a car, and she cries out for some Catholic priest to come by and and he does a few things over her and, and supposedly gets her saved as she's dying. You know, she made her confession right then and, and then she dies and, you know, straight through the pearly gates. There's a cabin in the sky, so be careful when you step out the door. But anyway, you know, she, she gets saved. But the idea that I can just confess this, it, I can just go on sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. And all I got to do is just confess this. There is no victory. There is no overcoming sin. There is none of that. You know, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And the world's churches just say, yeah, go ahead and keep sinning. Keep, you know, that, you know, just confess it. Just confess it. No, there is such a thing as victory. In a Christian's life, a true Christian with the Holy Spirit of God is supposed to be an overcomer. And that is get the victory over sin. Check us out on the web at is that really in the Bible dot com?